Hello and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to draw textures to the screen. More specifically, we are going to draw a player figure that the user will use to interact with our game world. All the resources I use are freely available for download from my GitHub repo. The link is in the description section. Alright, the first thing we need to do is to move all files to a game package to avoid clutter. Then we need to rename the modules, fix the imports, compile and run to check if all is well. Now we can start working on the new functionality. We have a player and we want to display it in our game window. A player has a certain size, a position and a texture. It may also have a draw and a move function. Now suppose we have an enemy instead. It has the same properties as the player, doesn't it? What about an obstacle? A building, a tree, rock. They too have the same properties, but the only difference is they are stationary. So instead of creating a player, a monster and an obstacle class, we can generalize it into an entity. And we can implement the base functionality only once. Thus, we will be able to inherit that base functionality later on in our game and expand any further functionality if needed. For instance, an attack or a heal function for the player or enemy. Let's get down to implementation. I'm going to create an entity class. It will have the following private members. A texture, a frame for animations and a position. Then I'm going to implement a constructor taking in a texture, frame and position as arguments and just copying those values. We also need to implement a move and a draw function that we will be able to override in the future, if necessary. Finally, we may need an update and a process events function. Since their implementations strongly depend on the type of object, they are going to be abstract. This will enforce custom implementation upon inheritance. That's it! Now we can go ahead and create our player class. It is going to inherit all the default behavior from the entity class. It will also use the entity's constructor upon initialization. We also must implement the abstract update and process events functions. I am going to leave them empty for now. Alright, let's go to our play state. I'm going to load the player texture. Here it is. As you can see it has multiple frames that can be used to animate the player. Each frame is 80 by 110 pixels. So let's create a player instance and initialize it. Finally, all that is left to do is to draw the player to the screen using the draw method we defined earlier. Compile and run. Now do not forget to press P in order to switch to the play state. Here is our player. In the next video we are going to implement player's movement and basic animation. See you next time and have a nice day!